Warning, the following presentation contains cold, hard truths that might change the way you think. Viewer discretion won't do you any good now. It's been six months since Starfield was released. And pretty much the entire gaming community has turned on it. People have been crying over Starfield since long before it was released. Some people hyped it up way too much, and others just hated on it because it wasn't Elder Scrolls VI. The truth is, Starfield really is the most polarizing game I've ever played. And I don't mean that people are polarized by it. I'm polarized by it. Bouncing back and forth between thinking it's one of the greatest games ever to... not. But if you're familiar with my channel, you'll know that I don't care about the same things as other game reviewers. I'm not gonna complain about frame rates being capped at 30. You can't pay me to give a shit about the graphics sometimes not being mind-blowingly amazing. I don't even care about people not having eyelids. Oh fuck, this is so good. Oh my god, I think it's just funny like because of the way they look, man. I definitely don't care about whatever this guy is crying about. Sorry, did you want to get immersed in our world? Yeah, well, guess what? Fucking pronouns! Fucking gender ambiguity! Fucking current day Californian shit! I wonder how far this guy actually got in the game. You think the pronouns are frustrating? How are you gonna get through the missions? Or the bugs? The learning curve of the gameplay? And we'll never know. Now, I am not saying Starfield is perfect. Trust me, I have gotten very annoyed at this game. But hating on Starfield has clearly become the cool thing to do, with corny memes about obvious graphical hiccups, or just the amount of people trying a little too hard to pin negative things onto the game. Like the recent story that went viral about Walmart selling copies of Starfield for three cents. No, that's not because of how much people hate Starfield. Walmart is known for doing that with all their physical games that don't sell. It's a pretty weird phenomenon. Or you'll see articles like, Starfield updates will never fix its biggest crime. One area where Starfield falls short is the fact that dogs are nowhere to be seen. Really? That's the game's biggest crime? The lack of dogs is a good example of the turn away from the typical whimsy that can be found in Bethesda games. What turn away? There's plenty of whimsy in this game. I mean, you can drink beer out of a juice box. I think that sets the tone perfectly. The Starfield NASA punk aesthetic can also feel somewhat limiting as the benefits of taking a grounded approach sacrifice some flights of fancy and creativity that might have filtered in otherwise. Okay, that is complete bullshit. This is the least limiting game world they've ever designed. For once, we're not roaming around some barren, depressing, post-apocalyptic ruins. I'm not saying this is a better game, and I love Elder Scrolls and Fallout, but come on, people in Starfield are just doing a hell of a lot better. There's way more variety, and I'm sure they had so much more fun designing it. And if they had to sacrifice dogs in the process, well, tough, doggy do. Some people have complained that Starfield is too clean or PG. If cyberpunk is like The Wire, Starfield is the West Wing. This is nice sci-fi. Although there are some very dark and depressing missions. But if you want dirty, dingy, cyborg penis humor, there's always that masterpiece to play. Now, it took me a while to review this game because and I don't know if you heard this or not, but it was buggy at launch. Normally, I enjoy giving coverage to bugs, but this was so bad that at one point I actually struggled to get anything done in the game. I couldn't even exit my ship without being randomly marooned somewhere, like an enemy mine, which is one of my favorite movies, but that's not the point. Now, it's a different story. Bugs have been fixed, the graphics have even improved. They had some kind of incredible performance patch recently because I'm no longer scared of everybody. I've seen so many improvements throughout this game that at this point, looking at the current climate, I think I might have to officially call Starfield an underrated game. M maybe. Just, I don't know, we'll see. 
Starfield is a total achievement in sci-fi writing and world building. It has some of the tightest first-person combat we've ever seen in these famous Bethesda RPGs. And it's a... Whoa. Hey, whoa. Whoa. Yeah, he'll walk it off. And it's a deep RPG where you can live out any personality or skill set you desire and really write your own story. You can be a space pilot, a space pirate, a space farmer, a space police officer. You can just take up space. You can be a corporate spy, a collector of artifacts, an explorer of worlds, an intern, or work at a fish market slash meth lab. My favorite thing about the skill system in this game is that you can gain experience from doing every single thing there is to do in the game, even running. Games that reward you for simply moving your character around make you feel like you're never wasting your time, even if you really are. But the things that really define your character are how you shape the story and the ways that you respond in conversation. This is how you really build a life for yourself or completely destroy it. But I like to play this game as the payola class, or whatever class is taking out a wad of cash and paying off anyone who stands in my way. Now, Starfield has some pretty underrated world design. For anyone complaining about the NASA punk aesthetic being limiting, I ask you this. Have you actually looked at this game? The way it combines science fiction and remnants from our time period with a jaw-dropping amount of detail, nothing is too sci-fi. Everything is realistic and believable, but they still obviously let their creativity run wild when designing it. In fact, this is definitely my new favorite game world to explore. I know I said that about cyberpunk, but... Down the bench. This is another great example of a game where you can have fun just walking around looking at shit. I noticed games lately are getting really good at these plastic flaps. Look at this. This is one of the most impressive things in the game. The discovery of alien life? Not so much. Now, not everything in this game has that much detail. When you're bouncing around on an empty planet, which you do a lot, you might not be as impressed as when you're slowly walking through a room packed with artifacts and cool architecture. This never bothered me, and I legitimately couldn't care less. You want the game to run, and not every moment needs to have detail. If I'm jetpacking along, I'm probably looking at the sky more than anything. So you could do whatever you want on that ground. Make it a white, empty ocean for all I care. I'll just fall through it like in Ghost Recon. Still not as bad as some of the bugs I've seen here. But this is the kind of rich game where you actually want to get sidetracked. I love ditching some boring mission I'm on for a much more fun sounding mission that I just stumbled into. Thankfully, this happens a lot. But the times where this game feels the most living and breathing are when you encounter random ships in space. Getting flagged by strangers is endlessly fun because you never know what kind of shit is gonna go down. Do they need your help? Or do they need to be blown to smithereens? And maybe it's something totally random, like that ship the Valentine where the guy just sings to you. My ship is entirely old and dead and Or maybe you want to blow him to smithereens. I'm not going to judge you either way. In terms of story in this game, Starfield follows the Bethesda tradition of making your choices matter. And it's not just choosing whether people live or die. You really move the game in different directions. Like when I convinced the United Colonies to work together with the Freestar Collective to take out the Terramorphs. The game does a solid job at making you feel like you control the story. One choice you'll have to make is deciding what to do with Ve Victus, the admiral who you find out initiated the I decided to play the recording for the court and throw him under the bus, but you can also choose to protect him instead. I'd know that voice anywhere. That's Francois. <laughs> this would never happen today. Because AI could totally fake that voice. He's a sociopath. Plain and simple, ma'am. <laughs> wow. That didn't take much. 
The best thing about the story is that you're basically in the middle of discovering conscious alien life for the first time in human history. And the entire Constellation plot is centered around the search for whatever higher intelligence designed the mysterious artifacts you've been finding. It's by far the best storyline in the game. If you're stoned. This game is like Contact, Alien, and Interstellar all had a baby. That was the Star Child from 2001. Now, following in another Bethesda tradition, Starfield has some pretty great companions. But when I first teamed up with Sarah Morgan, she didn't approve of a single thing I did and was very vocal about it. And I would be like, excuse me, who are you? Who, who asked you? We're not dating. Y you don't get to boss me around. And now we're married. It took me a while to convince her to date me. I basically spent the whole game aggressively hitting on her and she eventually broke. Because yeah, that's totally a healthy relationship. But after finishing the game with her as my happy, consenting wife, I realized I had some side quests left to do that I knew Sarah would not approve of, like the Crimson Fleet and even some of the Ryujin Industries stuff. So I told her to stay home for a while, and I partnered with Sam Co. because anyone with a cowboy hat in space has got to be chill. You know, you know, you know what I mean? But somehow everything I did got back to Sarah. Don't you dare. And boy, did I get an earful. And another earful. And it just keeps going. So we're in a weird place right now. Possibly looking at separation. I, I don't know. Can you get dumped in this game? Or like divorced? Maybe I'll do a gay playthrough of this game. You know, just for the trophy. There is a trophy for that, isn't there? Oh, there's not. Hmm. Oh, well. Look, I just think they need to explain the marriage system a little better. I mean, you should be able to hide stuff from people. Marriage doesn't work unless you hide stuff. That's all I'm saying. I mean, I was just trying to finish the game. I, I think if they're going to make it so that you... Oh, shit. Sam, oh my god, I'm sorry, man. Jesus. Oh my god, I just shot him right in the ass. There are more situations. Uh, Seriously, hats off to you. Wow. When I was growing up, everyone was afraid. This guy is such a trooper. He puts up with my lady troubles. He lets me Dick Cheney him. He does it all. Now, let's cut the shit and get real for a second. While I do stand by this game, for the most part, if you compare it to other Bethesda games, the reasons for not liking it are pretty understandable. You see, the thing that really gave Elder Scrolls and Fallout their longevity was the way that random, aimless exploration would actually benefit you greatly. Starfield doesn't really cut it in this department. Straying from the beaten path in this game just feels like a giant waste of your time. But this wasn't a problem for me personally. I never really felt the urge to just land somewhere and explore aimlessly because the game offers so many actual activities to do. But I can totally see why people were disappointed with this if that was what they had in mind. And with a game that is about exploration, I get why you had that in mind. Something I can also understand people not liking is how much of a slow burn the game is combined with the learning curve that it has. It's one of those games where people have 200 hours logged and still don't like it. Which kind of begs the question. Really? A lot of people apparently decided recently that Starfield is just plain boring. I never found myself particularly bored while playing it, but I did notice that it felt like a game that might be trying to please too many people and could be getting crushed by its own weight. It sort of fails at pleasing the No Man's Sky crowd because there isn't the same depth to crafting and the mechanics of accomplishing interstellar travel. It sort of fails the first person shooter crowd because there's a lot of dialogue and back and forth in the story that would definitely bore your average FPS player. And I guess it failed the Bethesda crowd because it isn't the exact same game loop as their previous games. But it also doesn't actually fail any of those people because Starfield is its own game. Sure, it's similar to Elder Scrolls and Fallout in many ways, but this was a much more ambitious game that requires way more attention and, unfortunately, patience. However, there are things about this game that I really don't like. 
But the only real flaws that I've taken note of are all system-related and have nothing to do with the gameplay. For example, the menus can all go straight to hell. The commands feel like they're all over the place. Transferring items between inventory screens just makes my brain hurt. What was wrong with how you had it? Just go back to that. The map controls feel like upside down or I don't know, it's no good. The autosave mechanic in this game makes me want to sever my own hand. I don't know what my problem is with this thing, but I've lost a lot of progress several times because I assumed it autosaved, but it didn't. It's just like it's taken a snooze. Now I've gotten into the habit of saving like a nut. I'm sorry, I'm used to video games where autosave is, you know, auto. But other than that utter crapola, I thoroughly enjoy Starfield. I mean, to say that this game has nothing to offer would be a statement worthy of someone in a straitjacket. Yes, the game has made me physically angry, but have we forgotten the state of the gaming industry lately? Anytime there's been one of these over-promising games, they usually take a while to get it right. No Man's Sky needed a few extra cooks in the oven, and Cyberpunk is just a triumphant story of redemption for the ages. Although, I always liked it. But you know Starfield is going to improve. And there will be a time where people won't be butthurt over it at all. Just you wait. And now I'm going to leave you with the one thing that could make Starfield the best Bethesda game of all time. That's right. There is one simple, genius decision of game design that shoots this game right above the scrolls and fallouts of the world and makes it hard to go back to them. Can you guess what it is? The jetpack. Because with this, no more Bethesda mountain climbing. So long, suckers. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't really think this through. Don't. Ooh. Eh, I'll walk it off.